Today I'm going to try something a little bit different and build a macro pad here just with the top-down camera. Unlike my normal videos, this is unscripted, so we're, we're just trying something here. This is by a company called Mountain Blocks. It is the PDX KBC macro pad. Um, it's a simple six key macro pad. It comes as a kit. I got two. This is the one I've already done, obviously, and I'm, I'm going to be building another one today and I wanted to uh, see how recording something like this goes on something pretty low risk so let's um, let's get right into it in the kit you're gonna get a couple things you're gonna get the bottom case which is actually just a piece of PCB with this really beautiful etching on it um, it's not really my style so I've got it inside out on this one but it is it's really really remarkably done the details quite good you're going to get the actual PCB. This has all your solder pads for everything, your six switches, six diodes, and your controller, which we'll get to in just a moment. The aforementioned diodes. I've got some keys here from a keycap set that I've used on a build I haven't made a video about yet, but is forthcoming. This is the hardware and the rubber feet for putting the, the whole thing together. And then the controller. So normally this kit comes with um, a pro micro as many of these kits do with a micro USB and headers. I wanted to make one that was USB-C. This first one I did has the standard micro USB port from the pro micro, um, but why not have a little bit of fun with it? So I actually got an elite C, which is a drop in replacement as far as QMK is concerned for the pro micro, but it has a USB-C port. So we're going to be experimenting a little bit today too, which is fun. We're going to give, we're going to give this guy a shot and, and see how we do. It also comes with the headers, just like the Pro Micro does. It also comes with an extra header because the um, Elite C actually has extra pins back here. And um, we're not going to be using that. There, there's no holes for it on circuit board, nor is it actually needed for the way these are used in keyboards. Typically, if you got something with a lot, I'm pretty new at the whole hand wired thing. Um, but if I'm understanding correctly, if you have something with a lot of rows and columns of switches, which is the way you hand wire keyboards, these are useful. But since we're just doing uh, three columns, two rows, we're not nearly saturating this controller. You can actually build a full keyboard with a controller um, of this of this caliber, even a frozen columns to accommodate everything. So we're gonna try that. We're gonna see how that goes. Um, as far as the QMK side goes, as long as we're talking about that, I'm probably not gonna show too much of that. There are a lot of great QMK tutorials out there. Um, I don't need to rehash what's already out there. Um, and the, uh, God, what are the letters? PDXKBC actually already has a profile on QMK, so it's really easy to go to the online configurator, which I'll leave a link to, assign these to whatever keys you want, download your firmware, flash it, pretty easy to do. Um, I've got mine set up really simply with F13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, and then I use a piece of software called Keyboard Maestro on my Mac to make those uh, do whatever I want, basically. Makes it nice and extensible, so. Um, there you go, this is what the finished product looks like. It's like a cooking show, we pull the finished one, out of the oven first, I've got um, box navy switches on here. Um, we're gonna be using uh, Sherbert switches from Novel Creams on this one. Typically, I'm a linears guy. I like my keyboards, you know, clacky, but uh, not clicky. And uh, I figured for the macro pad, you get some nice, uh, get some nice feedback when you use the uh, clicky switches there and gives you kind of a, that nice firm response that the macro is gonna go through. So using some Sherbert switches today, um, we're gonna have uh, something interesting happen when we try and solder these on that I also ran into on here, which I'll, I'll walk through when we get there. So without further ado, let's go for it. I'm gonna pull my helping hand in frame here. So it's gonna cover up some of the components from your view and uh, we will begin. So the first thing you wanna do with these is put in the diodes. They're going to be the first thing to go in and they go in on the back side of the board. Um, the diode sockets all have a line on one end. That's where the black end of the diode goes. And um, yeah, easy enough. One little trick that I like um, with putting in surface mount components like this is actually using a pair of calipers and I'll show you why. So we're going to turn these on. It doesn't actually matter how far apart they are, but we're going to get the prongs so that they line up with the holes which on this PCB I think is right about eight millimeters if I recall correctly. Yep, looks like about eight millimeters. And then we're gonna cheat in another half a millimeter to 7.5 in this case, Ooh, a little too high. 
cheat into 7.5, we're gonna lock it off. The reason we do that is because now we can use the prongs here for the internal measurement side of the calipers to actually bend the legs on the diodes, which makes everything nice and clean and consistent. So I'm gonna grab the diodes here. And then easy enough, center the diode between the two legs of the calipers and then bend them. I'm gonna turn it towards me and do this. It's a little hard to do it pointing up, but you kind of get the picture, uh, position it right there and then bend the legs. And if you, that one didn't come out so well, if you've measured correctly, you should have a diode that fits perfectly into its surface mount holes. And then once you have it through the other side, give the legs a little flare out to hold it in place and you've got a perfectly bent diode. So I'm gonna do the rest of these. And there we go. So if you've got really nice calipers and you do a lot of precision measuring, you probably don't want to risk uh, nicking these up because any um, damage to these might throw off your measurements. These are pretty cheapy ones and I'm not doing really fine grain measurements, so I'm not, not too worried about it in this case. But that's actually all the calipers were for. Certainly you can um, bend them over anything you want. You can hand bend them. You got lots of options. I find that's just a really clean way to, uh, to bend surface mount components. So let me shove the rest of these through here. And again, give the legs just a little flare out here to hold everything in place. Doesn't matter if they touch on the other side, we're gonna be uh, cutting those long legs off anyway. And there we go. We've got six happily placed diodes. So next up, we are going to solder these. Um, in so this is kind of a funny macro pad. I ordered these. Between the time I ordered them and got them, the website disappeared <laughs> that sells them, uh, Mountain Blocks. As of right now, when you're watching this video, it might be back, it might not be. I genuinely do not know. Um, so the assembly guide actually can't be found anymore. Um, I should have probably downloaded a copy um, when I was looking at it before I ordered these macro pads. Um, so I'm kind of doing all this from memory. I found uh, a build stream that I watched as well. Um, so kind of doing everything from memory. They said in their guide to do all of the soldering from what I thought was a funny side. Yeah, so this is actually the front uh, where it says uh, PDC, um, KOC, I can't read that font. Um, where it says uh, keep Portland weird, hack the planet at the top. This is actually the side of the macro pad you're gonna be looking at during use. Um, so they said to actually solder the diodes on this side. So if you get any flux all over your board or anything like that to, it would end up on this side. I didn't do that. Um, <laughs> I soldered on what's going to be the visible side. And once you have the keycaps and stuff on, I really can't see anything that I'm too picky about. And honestly, I kind of like the rough kind of exposed look of this macro pad anyway. So I, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. If you are worried about being able to see flux or anything on the front of your um, macro pad, they do recommend actually soldering from the component side, which is a little weird in the grand scheme of things. But you know, keep Portland weird, why not? Do something a weird way, maybe get a better result. That's, that's innovation, right? So I'm going to um, I'll flip this over and get to soldering. This is not a soldering tutorial. I'm not a great solderer. Um, I, I am an okay solder. I've done hobby soldering for a, a fair chunk of my life at this point, but don't take anything I am, I'm doing here as gospel, such as the fact that I already forgot to get my solder out of my workshop drawer here. So let me, let me pull that out. There we go. We got some solder. I'll leave the solder wick away. Um, you know, probably a good omen that I'm, I'm not gonna need it, hopefully. And uh, let's get to it. Um, I am using the Yihua uh, Y Y-I-H-U-A 937D soldering station. I'll have a link to it in the description before anyone asks, because it feels like you can't make a soldering video without someone being curious what soldering iron you use. And I am just messing everything up that I had so nicely laid out here. Let me get all that out of the way. Leave my keycaps there. And I will uh, solder these up. I'm going to turn on my hood, don't worry. I'm going to solder these up and I'll be right back. Thank you. 
All right, so we've got our diodes soldered on. Looks like I got good connections on all of them. I over soldered my, my first one a little bit, but I am uh, making mistakes on these macro pads that I'm building so that I don't make mistakes when I finally build a full keyboard at some point. So uh, there we go, got those done. Next up, you're gonna need a trusty pair of side cutters. If you're soldering and don't own side cutters, I'm not sure why you're soldering. And we're gonna cut these as flat as possible because again, this is actually the front side. This is the, the business end of the macro pad when you're done. Uh, all the printing on the board is this way, by the way, because apparently this is the direction you're intended to use it in. I've always used it in this orientation because I've got three fingers that I'm quite dexterous with on each hand. This seems like the natural orientation. This just seems odd and then the cable shoots out the side instead of the whatever. You can use it in any orientation you want. Hack the planet. So all that to say, cut these down as flat as possible. Uh, not so much that you uh, chop your solder blob off, uh, but uh, enough to uh, get them flat enough so that the switches don't crash into the uh, leftovers. All right, so step one, done. Got our diodes in, got our diodes all in the right direction. They're all nice and secure on there. So you kind of have to do things in a particular order with this. Um, to make sure everything gets into the right place at the right time, because you're kind of you're kind of building a sandwich here. So let me uh, take apart this one. So again, we can kind of see the one that's already cooked before we uh, bake this one. You can kind of get an idea of what you're what you're going for here, or any similar macro pads. This is actually a pretty common design. This sort of sandwich style using uh, standoffs and two PCBs to make a case, if you will. So uh, not out of the ordinary. This style of macro pad, so it may be helpful if you're building a, a similar one as well. Let's get those out of the way into the tray. We'll get that out of the way. So you can see here, got all of our diodes on. I got a lot more resin on the board the first time I did this. This one's already uh, already cleaner. Um, you need to get these shorter ends of the headers in before you get the switches in because always you're gonna be right up against the switches here, um, but you can't solder the controller on until you solder the switches in because these switches, solder pads, are underneath the controller. So we need to actually install the headers next, then the switches, then the controller, then we're good. So kind of a funny order to uh, to do things in. So let's get this out of the way here again. What I have found works really well for putting in uh, pin-based components like this is putting the whole thing in in situ. So now this uh, board actually says smooth side down here and USB. So you know what orientation this board goes in because where these pins connect to this board is quite important. Um, and so we're gonna go short side of the pins in the board, short side of the pins in the board, and then USB on this end, smooth side down. Uh, the Elite C and the, the Pro Micro both have a smooth side and the USB on the same side. So. Uh, no worries about cross compatibility there and then drop that over the top might be kind of hard to see I'm not totally sure um, But got all that into place now remember we don't want to solder this in place yet We only want to solder the pins in but the reason I do this is because it holds the headers If not straight at least the correct distance apart to support the controller once it's in place So I actually like to solder this just like this and put the whole thing microcontroller and all into my clamp, just like that. So now I know when I solder these pins into place and take the microcontroller off to then solder the switches, and again, everything's kind of backwards, uh, I know that um, I know that the pins will be, if not straight, at least the correct distance apart. So uh, this is gonna be a slightly longer bout of soldering, so I will speed this part up, and I will be back with you shortly. Thank you. 
All right, so I've got the short side of my headers soldered on. I did make a little mistake when I was uh, clamping the first side. I accidentally stood this header up. This is gonna be really hard to see on camera, I'm sure. Um, this header is about a millimeter higher on this end than it is on this end. Maybe not a millimeter, that might be too much. Um, so that header is a little crooked. Now it shouldn't actually affect this too much uh, once we've actually got it mounted on there. Oops, would help if I actually lined up the pins properly. There we go. Um, once I've actually got it on there, it doesn't actually affect anything too much. It does sit a little cockeyed, so if that bothers you, uh, this is where you'd want to desolder the side and go again, but it couldn't bother me less. Um, and I don't, I don't want to desolder it. So, uh, just something to watch out for if you do use the method I did. Make sure it's actually uh, flat on both sides, so it's not a little raised on one end. But it's all going to be in the sandwich anyway, so I do not particularly care. So there we go. We got our rails in. They're straight enough, or at the very least, the right distance apart. So mounting the switches. Uh, this is where there's something kind of interesting, at least with the switches I picked. You can see on this circuit board, there are two pads for the connectors of the switch. The center hole that all switches have, that's where the bottom of the stem dives into uh, at, the, at the bottom of the key press. But then there's these two alignment holes. Now the uh, NK Sherberts, um, do not have those alignments. The box and EVs also did not have those alignment pins. So I had to get a little clever uh, to make sure that the switches sit straight. That's the purpose of those pins is to make sure they're sitting all, all aligned. These are what's known as plate mount switches. Um, PCB mount switches have these because they align with the PCB, but obviously there's no plate for these to align to. So we're gonna get a little clever and a little DIY here with make sure the making sure these get aligned. So. First things first, make sure the pins on the bottoms of your switches are uh, are straight. Give them, a, give them a little click first. If you don't click your switches, what's the point of having clicky switches? Uh, we're just gonna kind of set these into place, just sort of generally, after making sure all the pins are, are nice and straight on these. Uh, given the enormous size of the, I, I haven't soldered anything else keyboard related um, other than this, this first one. All the other soldering I've done has been like kits and stuff in high school and then middle school. Um, bent pin there. I'm not sure if this is standard size for these pin holes, but uh, I'm not sure if you can see, but these pins are tiny on these switches. These are enormous holes. So I'm not sure if this is a compatibility thing or why on earth the holes for these pins are so big. You basically just have to flow solder uh, into the hole and um, make the make the connection that way and it works fine it just seems like that could have been designed better so maybe it's for a compatibility thing maybe some switches have slightly different leg positioning i'm not sure but uh there we go so got our sherbert switches all nicely placed but now you can see like some of these can be really really cockeyed um and your keycaps might bump into each other um it, it's kind of hard to hard to say so what i did that worked quite well on these now these have much flatter keycaps uh, these are sa profile keycaps um, instead of xda uh, these have quite a scallop to them and I've, I've grown to quite like sa keycaps these are what's on my k6 um, these are the uh, the np pbt uh, keycaps from KBD fans, and they're very flat, they're the XDA profile. These are SA keycaps I got off AliExpress, um, and I used the rest of the set on another build that I'll, again, have a video coming about. Um, these are what would be the bottom six keys of the number pad, but I, I don't do number pads on keyboards. So I'm gonna use them here, this is perfect. Um, but the SA keys are quite scalloped, so what I actually might do is, carefully, uh, take these off and put these on, because basically what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put the keycaps on the keys before I solder them, which makes it much easier to align. You can kind of see the grid, the F1 key still is floating a little bit, but it's fine, you don't see it in use. Um, it's much easier to align these, and then what I did was I stuck a piece of packing tape over the top of the switches to hold them in the rotation they're in, flipped it over, soldered the switches, took the packing tape off, and I had what was probably going to be a much better alignment than I could have reasonably gotten on my own. Um, and because of the scallop on the S8 keycaps, I don't think the packing tape will be quite as easy as just to put on. Um, or I think I actually layered it on top, so yes, yeah, because if I did this, the switches would fall out to, to put it on. So I'll be gently laying a piece on. So uh, let, me, let me work these off. The thing that gives me the heebie-jeebies about taking these off is that basically the switch is only held on by the solder joint. That center pin is only for alignment. It, it's not holding it in. Um, so if you're going to build a keypad like this without a plate and you want to take your keycaps off, make sure you're kind of putting most of the force on the side with the solder joint so you're not pulling and kind of tor You can actually kind of see that the switch 
just freely bends off that side because there's nothing holding it over there. Whereas when I torque it this way, it holds steadily in place because that's the, the side the solder's on. So I'm gonna do that actually. Let me um let me get these. Or actually, should I just grab some other extras? From that? No, I'll just take these off. Um, see, we're all learning together. So let me pop these uh, keycaps off and I'll be right back with you. You know what'd be much smarter? Using a keycap puller. It's weird. It's almost like they make them for that. Uh, uh, my keycap pullers are over at my other desk. There we go. So let's get that around there, and then we'll still put the majority of our pressure on the soldered side. Oh, that is so much better. Okay, heebie-jeebies, no more. Much easier to take keycaps off when you use the, the right tool. Who would have thought? Ooh, that one's on there tight. Come on, buddy. F6 does not have commitment issues. That was really on there. Then we get to see the nice uh, navy stems of these these box switches. Um, so these are actually internally uh, very similar switches. I think these have a yeah, definitely have a much thinner click arm to them. Um, a lot of people think box switches are named for the box stems. It's actually because there's a box inside of the switch that contains the clicking mechanism, and that's why they're also water and dust rated. Um, is because all the electronic components are actually sealed away. Um, that's what makes it much trickier uh, to lube these switches should you choose to. These are not lubed um, because I press them, number one, so infrequently, and number two, uh, they're trickier to lube because they're, they're not like an MX-style switch with a you know a stem that rubs against a, a leaf. It's actually a very different internal architecture. That's that's quite cool. So get this out of the way. Couldn't matter less what order we put these switches on, but being the neurotic fellow that I am, and I'm gonna be careful of those pins on the bottom, being the neurotic fellow that I am, why not put them in order? Three, whoop, switch down. F6 wouldn't have done that, shame on you, F5. F6 is not afraid of commitment. Whoop, there goes F32. Maybe it's because I have shaky hands, actually. It's not a lack of commitment from my odd-numbered function keycaps here. All right, don't let me down, F6. Can't really talk to you up here. And F5 and F3. Okay, so now that we got these in place, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this as straight on as possible. I'm sorry if my head is in the way of the camera. I have an enormous Irish head. Um, and this is my first time filming a video top down like this. So we're all learning together. So I'm just gonna get these as aligned as possible again. I'm not gonna be too nitpicky about it. The whole point of these, oh my God, um, is to learn um, brush upon soldering skills for when I eventually solder a full keyboard. I've got a build coming up, hopefully in December. Uh, if that's when I make the video, <laughs> remains to be seen. Um, the final parts should be arriving in, in December from a group buy. Um, for, for my first keyboard that I'll have to solder, and then I've definitely got one coming next year as well. Um, so that's looking pretty good to me. I, I, I'm not gonna move it for fear of upsetting the apple cart there, but that looks pretty good to me. So let me roll across the room here. Grab some packing tape. And try to, as gingerly as possible, Lay this on without shoving the keys around. But you know what? If they're a little crooked, it gives the macro pad some character. And keep Portland weird, according to this macro pad. This is a good one to learn on. This was a, a cheap kit, so if Mountain Blocks uh, exists again when, uh, when this video is being viewed by yourself. Uh, this is a great kit to learn on. It was pretty cheap and actually um, the proceeds support a group in Portland that I couldn't totally get a beat on what they do. It seems to be a group that teaches kids in Portland about coding, if I could tell correctly. Um, so that's pretty cool. I, I like things where uh, everybody gets something. I get a clever little macro pad kit and some kids in Portland, uh, hopefully, <laughs> I guess if Mount Blocks doesn't exist anymore, I don't know, um, hopefully get to, to learn to code. I don't code, so the more people that do the better, because I am I am a hardware guy myself, but that's looking pretty good. I am, I am pretty happy with that alignment, so you can see why I'm using the packing tape here to hold the switches uh, in, in order here, because I, if I flip this over, I would have no clue um, 
how the switch is looking. So uh, I think we're in business here. Let me uh, let me flip this over. I'm gonna fire my, uh, actually, uh, let me give you a brief uh, rundown here first. So you can see, maybe you can't see, but the one pin of the switch is in this hole, the other's in this hole. And they're really kind of, they're really close to the left one, as you're looking at it, is close to the top of the hole. The right one's close to the bottom of the hole. So it's almost like they're clocked, but there's all this space. This is almost more of a, a slot than a pin, if you will. Um, so there must be some switches out there that, uh, that have a different pin. Maybe Alps switches are slightly different. I don't know, because Alps and MX switches need a different board. A mystery for another day. But what you need to do is you almost need to f uh, flow solder into these holes to get enough to hold the switch into place. Number one, to make the electrical connection, but number two, to actually hold the switch into place. Um, if you're a little more brave than me, you maybe want to put a dab of super glue on the bottom of your switch if you're using plate mount switches. If you're using PCB mount switches, I'm sure this is much less of a problem because you've got the three pins um, all making contact. That will give some structural support, obviously in, in the Z direction, a switch with three pins would just be as easy to rip out as one with um, just the one pin. So uh, up to you. Um, but ultimately, you need to use quite a bit of solder on these joints to make sure that you make a good connection. So once again, I'm going to flip on my, my solder hood here. I'm going to solder up our, our six switches, and then we're actually um, well over the halfway point with the soldering stuff. All that will be left is, is the controller. Be right back. Alrighty, so we have some soldered switches. Now, this is kind of a scary moment, taking the tape off. As far as I can tell, I've got solder flowed between the rim of each connector uh, and the pin. So I'm kinda, normally when I'm recording videos, I've got lights and stuff set up, and today I've just got the, the overhead lights on. So I apologize if this is kind of a dark video. It's also making it a little tricky for me to see some of these. You know what, I'm gonna reheat K5 and K2 here. I'm just gonna heat the pin up. I'm just gonna flow a little bit more solder in. Yes, I know, I'm soldering without the hood on. Try fast, take chances. Keep working weird. All right, now I'm confident. I like that. Um, so really, especially like these right ones with the slot, um, you really only need to connect that uh, gold colored rim, which is the, the conductive part of the PCB being exposed uh, to, to the pin. You don't need to fill the whole thing. On some of these uh, left sided ones, I did fill the whole thing just because of how surface tension works. Um, but uh, you don't you don't need to, to do that on this kit or any other. You just need to connect to the rim. So we're gonna look at the top here again. And you know what? That looks pretty, pretty darn straight to me. I am, I'm quite happy with that. That looks good. None of my switches are falling out. I think we did pretty well. So let me get rid of this piece of tape here. All right, cool. So now we just need to do our microcontroller and then we're done with the soldering part, although the the assembly part's pretty easy. It's just screws and standoffs. So we're basically done once we have this on. Again, I'm not gonna go through the whole flashing of the, the QMK firmware. There are lots of amazing QMK tutorials on YouTube. Watch them. I'm not an expert by any means. Uh, I have flashed a total of two things with QMK. My first one of these, and uh, the uh, the next build, I'll be making a, a video about. Um, flashing is very easy. On the keyboard I built, there's there's a button that puts it into reset mode. On these guys, you short two of the pins. I'm having a hard time. Uh, wait, oh, reset and ground. So the 
uh, one, two, three, the second and third pin in on this side. On this one, they are also labeled reset and ground. That puts the, uh, the controller into a mode in which the firmware can be flashed that it's happy with. Um, and then if you have auto flash turned on in the QMK utility, um, it just, it flashes as the controller boots up. Pretty easy peasy. Um, then you get to design your firmware in the QMK configurator online. So, um, I'm going to do the same. I will be, I'll be back shortly once I've soldered these. These are by far the hardest ones for me. Um, when you're doing the short side of the pins on the controller, you can kind of get the soldering iron above them because they're so stubby. These ones are quite long. Um, so you really kind of need to shove the iron between each one and come at the other side with the solder because uh, as we all learned in electronics class in high school, soldering class, shop class, wherever you learned it if you did, uh, you need to heat up the contact and the pin so when you flow the hot solder onto them, <clears throat> the surface tension effects take over and flow the solder over the whole joint. So I'm going to do that and I will be, I'll be back once again. Alrighty, so looking at all my pins here, uh, the tricky thing with both the header side of this and the board side of this is making sure you don't put so much solder on the connection that they uh, they short each other. So just taking a, a look-see here. These are not my finest solder connections, but that's okay. We're learning. Um, if you feel like you have enough solder on the joint, but um, it doesn't look very nice, if you reheat the joint, it'll kind of help. Uh, Reflow things on. I got solder all the way up the side of that pin. That's amazing. Bravo, Ian. Cool. You know what? I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks great. So before I um, put the case together, put keycaps on that kind of thing, I'm going to run this over to my computer and I am going to uh, give it a test real quick. If it works, I'm going to load the firmware uh, that I made for this one. And um, if it works, I'll report back. If it doesn't, we're going to do some troubleshooting. Well, great news, everybody. We have a happy, healthy macro pad. It uh, accepted the firmware from this one just fine, which you'll remember. It uses a Pro Micro, and this is using an Elite C. They're totally interchangeable, um, as far as I can tell, at least in this scenario. Uh, and it, it works it works great. And this one has a blue LED. This one has red and green LEDs. So blue is cooler, as we all know. is the coolest color of, of LED. So let me, uh, let me reassemble this one here real quick. And by the way, the uh, I mentioned uh, shorting out pins two and three here uh, as the way to uh, put it into reset mode. I just use a screwdriver for that. Same way you short out like motherboard headers when you're building a PC to uh, trick the computer into turning on before you have the case buttons connected. That is very exciting that that worked on the first try. Nothing worse than uh, making a tutorial and doing it wrong during the tutorial slash build guide thingy. How embarrassing. So there we go. Here's the original one. Let me get my solder out of the way here. Yeah. And let me uh, once again take these caps off here. All right, F6. Oh, it's a strong one. Yeah. My goodness, F6. Oh, strong key. F5. Yeah, it falls right off. It comes right off. It doesn't fall. That, that's that's disingenuous. Three is a little stronger. Four is about the same as three. One is pretty. Normal and two is probably as strong as three and four. Man, F6, what a strong key. Good job, F6. Uh, we'll put those back on momentarily here. So, now the easiest part putting these two thingies together. 
Very clever. Lots of kits do this. They use standoffs uh, as the, uh, well, standoffs to get the two halves of the case apart. Really the only trick here, also save these little baggies. These are so useful for keyboard parts. If you ever get a kit, goodness gracious, these baggies are like gold. Um, the only difference is that there's two kinds of screws, ones with flat heads and ones with rounded heads. Got one of each there. The flat heads are so you can stick the little rubber bump-ons for the feet so it doesn't slide around on your desk. Very clever, love that. It's a very simple design. So the way I like doing these again, you can have the rows in or out, not really style. Uh, not really my style, goodness gracious. So I'm gonna have it in, just push the screw through and screw the standoff on. Don't need to do it real tight. We're not dealing with huge forces here. You're just dealing with the weight of a PCB, six Sherbert switches from Novel Keys, an Elite C controller, six diodes and six SA keycaps, which if you ask fans of GMK probably weigh a ton. Uh, I've been told they don't like SA, not all of them. I don't want to generalize. But I've been told by GMK, OEM, Cherry Profile typists that SA feels like typing on stilts. And I, uh, I type very happily on the XDAs on my keyboard at work and the SAs on my keyboard at home and the OEM Cherry Profile on the K8. I, uh, I seem to be pretty agnostic so far. I gotta tell you guys, I'm really, really liking typing on SA. It's very satisfying. So uh, now we got this done. Easy peasy. We'll put the feet on last. Uh, let me... Uh, Screw this part on now. This part I'll probably need a screwdriver for. Can't really do this by hand. I would be very curious to know what pins are actually being used on the Pro C. I was having that thought while soldering on. You probably don't actually need to solder all of those pins. I just don't know well enough, nor did I bother to look at the traces carefully enough to see which pins are actually being used on that controller. Because I'm betting it's not all of them. That would be a silly way to design a, a circuit board like this. So now we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna throw some rubber bump ons on so it doesn't slide around on the desk. Very clever, this kit designer again. This is great. This is, uses very few pieces to get quite a bit done. I like it a lot. I've got a couple other macro pads wanting to build. Oh, as I mentioned in the K6 video, I've actually still got my Tentaku kit hanging out. I, uh, I just want a little more confidence before I put something so nice together. But that is still forthcoming. Don't you worry. There we go. My twins. So let me uh, reassemble the first one. You can get some nice clicks along the way. Whoops. My clumsy, shaky hands. I suppose speaking of hands, I can get my uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, uh, seventh, and eighth hands out of the way. F6. Good strong key. That's my boy. There we go, there's the original. I'm gonna throw my keys on here. Uh, the <laughs> this one, the keys will be in the other order. This one's one through six, this one's gonna be one through six. Because again, I'm using numpad keys, and because SA keys are scalloped and not a flat profile like XDA, uh, if I had them out of order, there'd be this weird ridge of key in the middle. So I'm gonna uh, put these on. Whoa, those are tight. Oh my, these keycaps might not work on these switches. or SA keys just look hilariously tall on plateless builds. Okay, might have to reconsider this. We'll see. That also matches my keyboard on my desk, so vanity might get the, the, uh, the better of me. All of this looks hysterical, so we'll see which way vanity goes on that. Because these, these <laughs> okay, it does look like typing on stilts when you have it on a plateless build. I will posit that to uh, low profile keycap enjoyers. This, this looks hilarious. If that looks that hilarious on my desk, I may have to use some extras from another set. Man, I am having a hell of a time centering these keys. Keycaps, rather. Oof. SA just sounds so nice, though. Like, obviously, two completely different keys, not a fair comparison, but there's just a, there's character to SA keycaps. These sound all very samey when you're typing on an SA keyboard. Yeah. There's something magical about it. So there you go. That is the PDX KBC macro pad from Mountain Blocks, should the company still exist. Uh, as with any good build, you always have a part left over. Luckily this time, 
it's not one we need because we're not using those pins at the bottom. So we've got uh, the original here. We've got its follow-up mapped. Um, I think I actually mapped it this way because this is the way it sits in the key. Key, QMK, goodness gracious, the QMK configurator. So it's F13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. I use it like this. Keyboard Maestro doesn't care. I assign my macros however I want. Uh, right now on Mac OS, I've got this set to open emoji picker, open new window, close current window of whatever program I'm in. Ooh, the five one is scalloped because it's the center of the keypad. I really like the scooped SA keys. Goodness gracious, focus. Emoji picker, new window, close window, snap to left, full screen window, snap to right. So I can click view window management and access my all important emoji picker. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching so much, guys. Um, if you do, uh, if you do want, uh, drop a like. If you have a question, drop a comment. And uh, this seems to be kind of a regular thing. So I'm going to say for the first time on this channel, you guys heard it first. If you're enjoying these videos, why don't you drop a subscription? Uh, a lot of people have subscribed based on the K6 and K8 videos, so clearly there's an interest for uh, entry-level keyboard videos like I make, where they're kind of short and concise. We'll see in editing how short and concise this one is. Again, this is kind of an experiment. Uh, I will try and keep the, the normal videos between 10 and 20 minutes. But uh, no script today, just me doing some soldering and wanting to take you along, along for the ride, uh, poor lighting and all. So thank you so much for watching, and I will, I will see you all in the next one.